Spiky bits. Hey guys, MBG here with a look at the new uh, flyer bits. I spent a, most of the day today cutting up the kits and trying to figure out how these things would, uh, you know, basically retail. <laughs> Because there's a lot of different weapon options and a lot of different conversion opportunities and things you can do with them and different things everybody has wanted for so long and not had and things that uh, people have converted, you know, like the Night Scythe wasn't out for a while, so people have made theirs. So it's like, you know, it's a lot of a lot of what ifs and a lot of different things. And usually there's always that one bit that sells super quick and we run out of, but you know that's that's just the game. So. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, I figured we would give you a closer look at kind of um, the kits and how they break down and maybe give you some different ideas for w what you could do with them um, because these kits pretty much rock and it's the pinnacle of anything GW has put out um, way, you know, way surpasses the, the, the Super Heavies, the Stompa, the Bane Blade, the Shadow Sword. I mean, it just blows that stuff out of the water, blows the Storm Raven out of the water. And I can't wait to see what comes out in the future. But anyway, so the first look uh, we're going to take is at the uh, Necron um, Night Scythe slash uh, Doom Scythe. Uh, this is, as you can see here, that we got the we got the main kit. Basically, you got your main main body hull kind of thing here. Let's take a closer look at it. I don't know if you saw my unboxing videos, but this thing is huge. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's four or five inches across. You've got two main parts which uh, basically right here contains the pilot and everything and then you've got uh, some armor plating that goes over top of it like this and then on the bottom as well for your uh, uh, Tesla gun mounts and your flight stand as well so this is a neat little bit when I see this you know I think of like a flying saucer or something or I want to attempt to put some legs on it maybe something like that make a little walker like you know uh, War of the Worlds or something like that maybe cut, maybe cut this down right here kind of make it into a torso or something I don't know just just some just some ideas I get just looking at it just some different things I might want to do and there's a little sensor array that goes goes on the front there kind of looks like a uh, uh, tomb blade or like a stalker or something uh, then we got the wings which are two parts top and bottom uh, so there's four actual pieces you got left and right wing there and these things are cool I mean I guess you could use them for terrain or something maybe or so you put on an existing, you could buy one set maybe and, uh, you know, making it, make a, you know, conversion on the cheap. I think these things are like, what, 50 bucks or something. So they are a little bit expensive. Uh, then we've got the, what is it, uh, the crew, basically the pilot here. Uh, where he's got like a little thing he locks into, some arms and such. And his control panel and different things. Uh, then we've got the uh, the wormhole portal. Which is kind of neat. This actually, you can you can make it two different ways. You can interlock these uh, these support legs into the the main uh, the focusing unit here uh, with your hoses, and that that can be it. Or you can use the wormhole portal bed itself. Now, what's nice about this is a lot of people are gonna be like, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, you could use this for the uh, the dark Eldar um, uh, portal that they can come out of as well so it's an you know making a little marker or put it on a 40 mil base or something I don't know I can see dark elder players being interested in that maybe uh, and then you've got the power source um, little coupler thingies I don't know what their technical term is that go on on the actual when you put the two halves of the wings together these things go right there in between well when I line it up straight but you see the holes right there you kind of get the idea so that's uh, that's the first round of bits for the night scythe, and then we've got it's it's a small kit. It's only two sprues. You got your normal flight stand and everything. I think these retail on G Dub for like ten bucks or so. so I'm sure Spiky Bit sells them about the same, give or take. Then you got the um, what is this? The Death Ray, which <laughs> if this gets everybody once, and then after that they won't let it near them because it's dirty. And then you got your uh, twin Teslas, which are very similar to the um. The ones that come on the command bars, different hoses and such, focusing, focusing crystals. Uh, what does this go to? Oh, these are the weapon mounts. They go in the sockets there and hook to the underneath. So, it's, you know, a couple different, covered different bits there for the uh, for the night scythe. So, that's pretty much the night scythe kit. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it's only two sprues. 
uh, it's got a lot of cool bits on it if you're a Necron player. Like, you can do different things and everything with it, but, you know, as far as, as, far as that goes, that's pretty much it. Now, the next kit we're going to look at is the Orc, fi uh, the Orc Bomber bomber kit, which has a ton of parts. Uh, is ridiculously loaded with parts. This thing is kind of sick. Um, it comes in three sprues, full of different things. First off, I want to take a look at, I guess this is basically, you would consider this the accessories. We've got, uh, these are some shooters that basically lock in, if I grab the right, right halves here. Oh, well, that ain't going to work either. I have completely the wrong halves. Of course, I would grab the wrong things. There we go. Okay, so there's the right half. So this basically is a little insert that you can put into the wing to give you uh, more DACA. And then it comes with a couple different... Oh, actually, this one only comes with one. But it comes with the, uh, the shooter there. And basically, it's just an insert that you put in the wing between the coupler and uh, the fuselage that extends the wing a little bit and gives you, you know, extra firepower, basically. It's, it's kind of neat. You know, you can put this thing on anything. You can mount it on top of a battle wagon. Under song, make some sort of... Or Walker Titan instead of like a Stompa. I don't know. It's neat. It's neat a little bit. Uh, then we've got the Orc Pilot, the fighter bomb or the bomber pilot. He's got basically his normal his normal body. Uh, and then you got a couple control sticks. You got his feet and the little um, uh, basically I guess that would be the yoke that would come up from the floor to attach to it. So that's neat. And then here's the basically the the cockpit itself. The bucket, I guess for lack of a better term, and uh, instrument panel. Then you've got the wingtip uh, fuel tanks, which uh, lock right into that with that slot right there, and they're, they're two part, they lock right in. Uh, and then you've got the, I'm sure it's hard to see, but the new canopy pieces. This is the rear uh, cockpit grot, uh, gunner position, I guess, basically. It's not the turret, and this cockpit is neat because it locks, kind of locks in like this right on top here and the the rear is actually open which is kind of kind of weird but anyways it's hard to keep balance there but and then that actually locks into the to this set of cockpits in the front and it makes kind of like a like a three-piece cockpit kind of thing uh to the front uh these will probably retail separate because i'm sure people uh, it, it, if you haven't put yours together yet, always use plastic glue when it comes to canopies. I ruined fire jets back in the 80s because I couldn't afford the extra glue because <laughs> I was just a kid. But, you know, if, if you can spend the extra couple bucks on the tester's plastic glue, it's it's money for putting these clear cockpits in. Because if you use normal super glue, it'll, the, the fumes will actually um, uh, frost the canopy. If That is if you manage to not even get a little bit of glue on there and ruin the, the canopy itself. It's It's very tough to do. I don't even I don't even mess with it. Like I said, when I was a kid, I destroyed quite a few fighter jet models, and it's not like I could buy the extra bits. You know, testers didn't do that, or and Ravel and all of them didn't do that. So we're a little fortunate that there's all these bit services out there where you can get supplemental parts if you screw something up. I already had a guy tell me that his cat claimed his uh, Storm Talon uh, canopy piece, ran off with it, and you know destroyed it. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry, man. We'll get we'll get the bits up here shortly for you. But, you know, it's just it's it's just funny because, you know, normally you just have to buy a new kit or just, you know, say screw it or whatever. But uh, these actually are more shooter panels. This panel goes over the wing. I don't have the wing handy, but when we get to that, I'll, I'll flip back and show you how this goes together. But basically, this there's an insert in the wing, a square panel, where this locks into it. And then there's this round piece, which underslungs around the wing uh, and then locks up. And kind of sandwiches the uh, the gun together into it, uh, and then you get to your ammo feed. And, you know, it looks like it's coming up out of the, the wing itself. And there's actually two different types of two different looks of guns for that one. Two different shooters, Daka shooters things. So that, that one's kind of neat. Um, and when it comes to what is it? This little rear grot um, gunner position. It actually comes with this little mount. Uh, ball joint mount. It's got a huge uh, sight, which is, which is kind of cool. But it uses one gun from the turret. So the turret has two guns, which would replace this, you know, if, if, if you equip the jet that way. Or if you equip it with this one, you just use one of the guns. 
So the guns will probably get sold separately, so you can decide kind of what you know what turret or whatever you want if you're trying to make it onto a battle wagon or a truck or something like that. And then you've got the extra, the other extra canopy too as well. And then here's the sh here's the uh, the guns for the Garot gunners. There's a left and a right one, and it doesn't really matter which one you use because both have this both have this internal socket here. So when you use the turret, which is right here. See the center, the center mounting bracket. It, it you, they lock into that, and then they go into the to the ball turret here. Well, no matter which one you use here on this rear, the single the single shooter turret, it it'll work. So you can buy either one of these, and it'll lock in. It doesn't matter. So and then here's the here's the ball turret that everybody's oohing and on over with your little little ball turret cockpit, and then you got the uh, the actual bucket itself with the gunner sits. You got a couple uh, a couple of sights. The mounting, the mounting pin for or the mounting uh, mount for the shoot, the little shooters, and the piece that actually locks into the uh, the bomb itself, which is pretty cool. You could use this for anything. I mean, you could drop this, you know, you could drop this in any any orc vehicle basically out there, or just use it separately, or you know, who knows? Shoot, put it on a couple treads and make make some grot tanks. I don't know. I mean, the, that's that's what's cool about converting orcs is the possibilities are pretty much endless. So there's the first set of bits for them. Then we got these here. And I really like these these bombs. These things are nuts. Check this out. It's a three-part bomb, right? And I was looking at it. I was like, oh, there's two different bombs. But no, there isn't. Because this bomb goes together like this, right? And then there's this little piece, right? So it's kind of like, it, it reminds me of one of the, uh, the, the nuclear bombs from World War II. I think they actually modeled it after that, but who knows? But anyway, so you get two of those, and those, those mount right underneath the wings, or obviously you can mount them to anything you want. There's a couple different thruster uh, variants. This one, this is just a normal thruster cap that locks onto the back of the fuselage. And then there's like a two-part one right here uh, that locks together, and it has a couple couple uh, fairings on it right there. A couple different fairings, which is neat, you know, something different. And then you got your landing skid. There's no gear on this. It's just like a skid. And the two arrestor hook parts. You got this little chain and a little uh, grab, grabby claw. <laughs> it's no shield helicarrier. This is very, very rudimentary. <laughs> uh, then you got the grot. This is the, the grot, uh, the grot gunner. The seat. Uh, you got three different heads and the gunner arms. Uh, these actually are the front fuselage uh, shooters, which um, you know they don't really stick in any particular spot. So if you get a couple extra sets of these. You could really, uh, you know, stack out that chin a lot. Okay, so that was the uh, the chin mounted shooters, and then we've got. Uh, let's take a look here. Oh, all the different pilot heads. These things are nuts. Let's take a closer look at these. I really wish some of these heads were out way back in the day because they are pretty neat. So we've got a captain head. Then we've got kind of like a uh, radio operator head. <laughs> da Red Baron head. And I don't know what this guy is. Oh, but there we go. Pilot and goggle set. Normally, this one uh, comes in a black reach on the the, uh, the def copter, so people usually like him. There's one with goggles too, but not a lot of people sell them separately. And plus, the uh, def copters are going to go out of print soon with the uh, sixth edition coming out, a new box set coming out. So, some pretty neat heads in here. Uh, even if you you know you don't want to run the flyer, you could probably use those for some different things. And then we got the exhaust manifold or the basic exhaust. Uh, you got two small ones here, and then a couple of larger big ones that actually go around the wing and plug into the back. Uh, and then we got some uh, some smaller uh, orc bombs. And like uh, Go Boy was saying when we did the unboxing, you could basically use these on your uh, tank busters and such, or build some sort of like rail system and have them uh, have them on the back. You know, shooting off some backs of orcs or something, or maybe some crazy ludos. Who knows? I don't know. Then we got a couple more different bomb slash missiles, some two parters. So that's a lot, of, a lot of the accessories there for the kit. And then we get into the actual structure of the vehicle. Uh, here is the actual fuselage itself, which, as you can tell, <laughs> it's as big as my hand slash wrist. Which is definitely a good seven eight inches long, two parts, uh, and it comes with this uh, this intake intake cover basically where it where it gets the intake or who knows how it works with orcs I don't know they don't even know how it works it just works right uh, then you got the basically fine stand standard uh, 
if we check out this box here, we've got the whole wing assemblies and everything. The wing, the wing is neat. Like I was saying earlier, like here's your wing, right? This is your basic wing. It's got, it's got this, this panel where you can see the wires and such, and like basically like a flap. And the flap is twofold because it, it, you get, you get this regular flap, right? Which is okay, great, and normal, and everything. And then you can switch it to. Make sure I grab the right one. Of course I didn't. You switch it to this flap, which if I had it trimmed properly would lock right in and then this one goes over top of it and what this does is gives you some gives you some elongated bomb racks and also kind of switches up the panel uh, the profile of the uh, of the, the the wing itself to you know just kind of make it look different from the different variants so then you've got okay so you got this you got your wing and you got different little things you can plug in here little panel and panelings so you got those two and then you got like I was saying earlier you've got the uh, the the shooter one here too which can plug in and then like I said it just you know that other piece locks in right there kind of sandwiches in and you can mount a gun right there so it's a very it's a very thought out kit as far as that goes um, let's see then you got the tail and also the same, same deal with the tail it's got a it's got a piece that basically elongates it um, and gets down in there it makes it a little bit bigger then you've got your tail fairings and stuff and you can these are cool because you can put them you can put them up top or you can put them down low you know you can kind of put them anywhere you, want. you can put them in the middle this kit's pretty interchangeable which I which I really like uh, and then you got your couplers and these things are neat because they basically attach this is what attaches the the wings to the actual fuselage itself and there's like another intake or something who knows and you basically mount this to the fuselage and then you mount your wing in here and like I was saying with those those other pieces there's an actual another piece that goes in here that elongates the wing a little bit and has it has a shooter out so these things you can pretty much put on anything you know if you want to put them on a, a truck or a battle wagon or something you know you can even lay them flat cut them off cut them off flush lay them flat on things cut off the engines there's all sorts of things you can do with these these fairings but most importantly you need them to attach uh, to the um, the wings to the to the fuselage right here. So, and then last but not least is this crazy new decal sheet, which is rather large. It's larger than a normal decal sheet. And the thing I like about this is it's got these decals that go along the the leading edge of the wings. All sorts of different uh, Orky clan glyph symbols, all sorts of different things. So, you got some white ones on there too, which really show well for. Uh, Death skulls. So that's the orc bomber. We'll switch over to the storm talon, which I got another little treat here in a little while. I don't know if you've uh, been watching the blog at all, but I did a I did a neat little walker conversion, a little mech warrior conversion. Uh, and we'll be getting to that here in the next couple of days. So here is the storm talon. These are some of the weapon systems uh, that it has. Basically, this is the underslung turret, the chin turret. Uh, there's a two-part little kind of uh, rotating piece here uh, that plugs into the turret itself. And then the turret has skids on it. These two skids right here uh, plug into these. And then the bottom, uh, wh whichever, usually the assault cannon, I guess, plugs in here. It's the only thing that plugs in here. has a main skid. So it kind of makes like this, this kind of like chunky box that has like two two skids, it looks like a little sled, and then it's got a main skid underneath it. So I don't know, it's something different. And then the tail, when uh, let's see, when I get to the when I get to the tail, I'll show you. But the tail, it's actually got a little uh, a little a gear that kind of hangs down, and it bounces off the tail and the weapon system. So it's very unconventional, but you know, it's Space Marines, and what do we know? Uh, then we've got the different bits here that go on the weapon pod on the left and right weapon pod. These bits, if you add to it, will make it the heavy bolter. This will make it the two different rocket upgrades. Uh, then we've got, I want to get a close up of this. We've got basically this head is probably going to be separate. And this is a sweet head. If you uh, if you play Grey Knights, you probably need a Tech Marine. And you probably want them to look like the rest of the Grey Knights. Well, that's where this head comes in because this head is the best Tech Marine head out there. So I'm definitely stealing one of these for me and making my plastic Tech Marines. 
Uh, and then we've got, well I say plastic, there will be a fine cast back to them because it's lighter and everything. So then you got the pilot bits here to go in the cockpit. Then you've got the uh, the weapon upgrades for the weapon pod for the last cannon. Uh, what else we got? Oh, there's the uh, actual assault cannon bits uh, to the to the underslung chin turret. You got a couple extra uh, quillas splash around the, uh, the, the kit itself, the flyer. Uh, I'll probably do these separate just because... You know, a lot of people run twin link, twin link assault cannons, and uh, you know the only other ones out there are the ones off the land speeder. But these are nice and bulky and big, and they would look really good if you cut off the uh, cut off the heavy bolter bits on a Razorback. These things would look money. Uh, let's get to the next bin here. Now, this is uh, this is something that kind of inspired me, and uh, uh, Chandler from uh, Fisa Blades was was hitting me up about this. You could use these uh these engines, the the side engines basically, you get a couple of these together. You can use these to make flying rhinos, flying tanks, anagraph stuff. I'd be very imperial looking and the sizing is just about right. You just have to figure out some way to uh to mount them. You could use this uh this pin which actually extends through the fuselage so that you can rotate the engines at the same time. Obviously this is not as big as a rhino so you'd have to do some creativeness to actually make it work. But I think the potential is there. I might even try it myself if I get time. So then you got your uh, you got your engine bits here, which are basically like uh, a left and right. Then you've got the front cap, the intake, the exhaust, uh, the thruster, which actually attaches to these two parts, uh, stuck together inside of here. And then you've got a bottom, kind of like a um, I don't know, a directional vent to help with the vertical takeoff and landing. That kind of flips down. You can attach that in different positions. And then there's a couple different little uh, wings that attach on the side here in this uh, this groove. And then, like I said, you've got the uh, you've got the one piece here that basically connects the two together so that they move at the same time. And here's the new little cockpit piece, which makes it a little easier to see. Like I said, these things are very easy to ruin if you don't glue them properly or if your cat runs off with them, I suppose. So we'll probably be selling that one separate. And next up, we got the interior cockpit. The cockpit itself is really cool. It's kind of like, um, kind of like I guess uh, a lot of you probably know about the A10 Warthog, where they basically built the the whole plane around the gun. And the actual cockpit itself is self-contained, like bullet, honeycomb, like it's just super resilient, and it's like a whole separate piece inside of the airframe. So then, kind of did that with the Storm Talon. Like they got this, they got this separate cockpit piece that you basically assemble. It's got this is not working for me. Okay, so you got the different the little VTOL thrusters which attach to the bottom here. Uh, then obviously you see right there is where the uh, flight stem goes in. This is part of the uh, underslung chin mount. Uh, then you got the cockpit area, back, different things like that. You got your uh, air control, uh, flight controls, and different things. So that plugs into the actual airframe fuselage itself. Over here is the uh, weapon pod. It's just a generic generic pieces to make it. You got these ones where it locks in uh, a couple of different side, like the last cannons or the heavy bolted ammo drums lock into here. If you put that on the outside, this one here they use for uh, the the rocket launchers. They don't have a specific like outside piece because all the rockets are self-contained. And then these are what the uh, the last cannon or the heavy bolter locks into. It goes on the front, and this uh, these stick out the back here. If you don't use the um, if you don't use the rockets, there isn't an exhaust to shoot out the back. So that's uh, that's the weapon pod set there. And last but not least, we've got the actual airframe itself right here, uh, which, like I was saying, kind of locks together here very carefully. A lot of fragile pieces there. Okay, so there's the airframe itself. It locks together, and like I said, the uh, the front cockpit kind of shoves up into here and makes it whole. Uh, and then you've got the uh, the space for the engine the engine pin goes to mount those together. Uh, here is where the the actual landing gear you can either you know slide it down so it can land or push it up like it's not going to land, whatever. And then the the tail goes on there. And then you got a couple different extra pieces like a top piece here where it's got that funky sensor. That sticks out the funky little uh, antennas and such, and then you got a random intake right there. Yeah, that's just kind of some of the pieces. There's like a, a mechanicus, a mechanicus cog kind of 
piece that goes in the bottom there, a couple different things, landing gear and such. So, but that's uh, that's basically like the fuselage itself. This would be good, like you know, if you just wanted to, I don't know, wreck the thing, <laughs> like have a have a crash lander or something like that, uh, or you know, if you wanted to go crazy and do all sorts of different things, you know, you need this in basically the cockpit. I did a cockpit separate, so you know, you could have a chance to make anything you really wanted, like any, that cockpit is generic, like, you can make any sort of marine vehicle there is, so, that's what I thought was neat about it, but, this one, I mean, shoot, you could even get super crazy and make some sort of combiner, like, have a couple of these for arms, and then, like, have some sort of, like, razorback, or, I don't know, some sort of structure for the legs and different things, like, make a Voltron, who knows, I mean, possibilities are endless with this stuff, um, like I said, I made a, I made an assault battle, battle tech kind of assault walker thing, so, I had a lot of fun with this. I'm still not done. I want I want to do a couple things with the orc bomber, and maybe some maybe some sort of uh, truck stalker uh, alternative with the uh, with the flyer. But um, since they're both the some same price now, actually the GW just raised it up a little bit. So, but anyways, that's uh that's kind of like a quick rundown of uh of how the how the bits are breaking down on the new the new flyer kits. So hopefully the next thing out is uh, six edition. We'll see. Uh, I'm hearing more and more that it might be first week of July, so that'll be exciting. And we'll see how these uh, how these things really shape out in the new the new rule set. So, uh, thanks for watching my uh, my video uh, walkthrough here of the new uh, flyer bits. I'm MBG Rob Bear, and happy game. Spiky bits.